Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is answering the question, which surface finish makes more power? A 40 grit or a cartridge roll finish or a burr finish? Now today's video, I'm actually gonna give you the dyno numbers before doing burr finish versus the 40 grit. You're gonna get those answers from this combination. Now, these are just my opinions. You're welcome to your own and take these with a grain of salt. They are not absolutes, period, which I'll get to in the video as well. So anyway, what is this and what you're talking about? Well, I had a 406 small bulk Chevy built. It uses AFR Enforcer heads, the 195 heads. It has 11.2 compression ratio, has an Urson solid roller cam, a 260, 270, 108 lobe separation, and 680 lift. Has a 1,000 CFM carburetor above, and it's used for a whole bunch of testing. I've done three dyno sessions. I just finished one last Thursday, but all the information from previous dyno sessions are in books that you could purchase on my website. Go to my website, which is wengines.com, and you'll see a link to on my online store, and you could purchase these books. So this is book one, and it has all the information from the dyno session one, which some of that stuff I'm going to bring up today because that is a comparison. This is version two. It is out. Both of these are available. Uh, this is version two, which has the burr finish, which you'll see that today as well. The reason for the books is because I also know it's very hard for you to see this stuff on YouTube as you're watching this, and it's much easier to have a printout. If you bought version one, I'll sell you version two and any other versions that I come out with in a PDF form. So if you prefer to have it that way, just email me. That. It's a little cheaper. It saves you a little bit of money, but you've had to have purchased book one to do that. Also, if you're overseas, I'll sell you PDFs, no problem, but I'm not shipping overseas um, or out of country, I should say. Uh, next thing I need to get to on all this stuff is the reason for the books also is it helps with all the dyno sessions. So the money that's collected for this kind of recoups some of the dyno stuff. So the stuff you want to see, that's the reason for it. One of the results from last Thursday will not be in either one of these books because I haven't finished the book for session three and it probably won't be for a long time. So just warning you, some of the stuff you see on one of the charts really or two of them will not be in the books because I just haven't finished it. Anyway, let's get to it. The whole idea for this premise was there's been several arguments back and forth on the internet about which finish is better. This is typically how I leave most manifolds. And there are several other people that just burr them. So the real question I had, because most of it had been based on speculation and some people had tests and I, I don't discredit them. I think that they're valid that, that one was better than the other. But I myself wanted to test that on the dyno mule to see if that's correct. However, even as I say this, Please, for the love of God, do not take this as gospel. This was just one test. Uh, please don't. Um, and I'm not attacking one person or another because you could do whatever you want. I don't really care. Um, I'm just giving the information that I found. This is not going to be what applies to everything, period. But I will retest it again also when the bigger heads get on the engine. But let's get to the numbers. I moved the, what I did is I pulled the sheets out of here and put them here. So just in case you're wondering, everything you're seeing here is in the books. Well, most of it. So here's how it started. This is the Elderbrock Super Victor, completely stock. On our combination, you look at it peaks, it made 552, which isn't bad. Um, this combination really did make pretty good power. By the way, the jets were never changed in the carburetor. And judge it for all you want, maybe we can get more or not. But this is also a huge time constraint and the air fuels are so close really and most of them, it doesn't matter. Some of them look different and the reason for it is this. On this sheet, what you're seeing is measured. And the way it's measured is they it has a fuel turbine that measures the amount of fuel flow and then you have an air turbine that measures the amount of airflow and it calculates the AFR. We actually have an actual O2 reading that's not on these printouts and that's the actual O2, so it's not on here. The problem with the calculated one is on some of the tests, this one being one, We'd ran a two barrel and then we, on this particular combination, so yeah, we did run two barrels on the Super Vic. Um, and then we switched to the four barrel. Well, once you put that line on to connect to the four barrel, that fuel flow meter is reading all that fuel flow into that line to fill the line to fill the bowl. So it makes it look richer than what it really is. I hope you get that. But anyway, that's stock. The second dyno session I did, all I did, and, and I'm going to show you real quick, so I'm going to cut away so you can actually see what the manifold looked like is this. Here's the burr finish. This is the exact way it looked when it got dynoed. What you see there is the, is the burr finish. All I did was use a um, aluminum burr and just did the whole entire thing. 
I didn't make it any larger or not. All I did was simply try to change the surface finish with that burr, and that's how it looked. So that's how the manifold looked. What did it do? Well, here it is. So this is, and by the way, I'm going to have overlay so you can actually see the difference, but these are raw numbers. This is with stock, so we remember we made 552. The only thing that was changed was the burr finish, and it made right at 559.8. So it gained horsepower, not a lot, but it did gain some power. So for the amount of work that was done, it did pick up power. It picked up torque too, which I'll show you in an overlay in a minute. But I mean, it was significantly better. And you can, again, ignore these air-fuel ratios. I promise you, those aren't right. The fuel mode meters and stuff are, but it looks weird. Um, just trust me. Anyway, so yeah, it picked up power. Um, no doubt about it. And it was the, from dyno session number two, and I tested 12 manifolds that day. This one was number one. It was so good that I actually contacted one of the guys who does burr finishes. And I asked, and he's known for that. And I asked him, what testing did you do to actually verify it? Cause I wanted to see if this was something, because in all fairness, I'd been, I was perfectly happy with the burr finish doing better, um, than stock because it really does save time. So in my opinion, when I'm grinding all this stuff, man, it takes so much time to make it look like this. If I could, if the burr finish was better, I was like, yes, this was a win. But I also wanted more data to kind of back that up. So, fantastic thing. Well, dyno session number three, which was last week, I thought, you know, and it was last burr of the Mormon, I just kind of thought about it. Why don't you just change, the, change it before we pull the heads off? So, I did this. This is exactly how it looks. I'm telling you what I've done. I left the, because this is how, if you ever get a port of manifold for me, this is typically how they look. I leave the burr finish on the floor. And I 40 grit this, cross buff the dividers, and through the top. And that's it. Same with the cross buff through here. So it's pretty smooth on the contours. 40 grit here, really rough on the bottom. That's it. That's the only thing. I would say more of the surface finish is 40 grit or smoother than it is burr finish. The only part that's really rough is the floor. So I wanted to test this. And again, I would be perfectly happy if it did worse. Because, I mean, it would save me time from grinding. And I would have data to be like, hey, customer, look, same engine, same manifold. This is what it did. But this is what it did. So here we have the 40 grit. So if we looked at the burr, our best one was about 560. We're now making 565 from that finish. And I'm telling you now, nothing got enlarged. I did not enlarge nothing, did knock out these humps, did absolutely nothing besides getting rid of the burr finish just to do that. You can look at this, that's exactly how it is. You might say, well, you port matched it. No, that's exactly how it comes from the factory. Um, matter of fact, you can even see some casting lines still left in there. That's, that's it. There was nothing really changed at all. So. When I was doing this, I thought, well, if anything, it's probably gonna lose some power because on this particular combination, anytime I put on a bigger manifold, because I know some of you right now are writing this before watching the whole video, I anytime I put on a manifold that was bigger, it actually didn't make that much more power, if any, and several of them lost. So the bigger manifold cross-sectional area and stuff was hurting, which I'll show you in a second as well. So I thought this would either be the same or worse, and it wasn't. And I mean, like, well, that's great. You've got all these raw numbers that I can't see by the book. Um, but let me show you the overlay. So we'll start with this. This is the stock Elderbrock 2925 is in, uh, is in red. So that's the stock one. Oh, sorry, I got these backwards. Sorry, the red one is the 40 grit finish. And the black one's the burr. So what you have here is this, this is the two finishes. Red 40 grit, black burr. So if you look, and this is look, giving you an idea, and I know several of you complain, how come you didn't pull it down lower? I'm gonna do really quick and it's gonna go off tangent. Um, you don't spend a lot of, if you're flooring the accelerator, I don't care what vehicle you're driving, usually it kicks down and you get to about 4,000, 30 to 500 to 4,000 RPM. However, if you're racing, you typically aren't below this. And, you're not, this is a great manifold, great for street and strip, but it's really more of a design for something you should probably race. So hence, we didn't pull it down further. However, if you look at this, the burr finish is better to, from 4,500 to about 48. 
So from that point, it's better. After that, the 40 grit's much better. I mean, and I'm telling you now, I did not expect these results at all. This is this is better. There's no there's no way to say this. It's significantly better. It just is, except for at the lower RPM. So a little bit of a shock there. I'm not totally be honest with you. A little bit of a shock. Um, kind of threw me off a little bit. So there's your overlay to that. But I want to show you this too. Because I have a bunch of other things here to kind of show you. This is, and this is the red lines, the 40 grit. The black line stock, the blue line is the burr finish. So this is what's amazing about it. The manifold itself, not much material has really been removed. That black line stock, the, um, of course, the red line is the 40 grit. It's the very top, and there's the burr. So if you look, even these two, and they're pretty close through this point, the two finishes, it's still significantly better than stock for the amount of work that was done, which... If you had said this to me before, I'd say someone just fluffed and buffed and really didn't gain any power. On this combination, it did, which again, shocking. But now, there's a very valid point that people have brought up, and I get this, and the point was this. Well, and I don't disagree with it. You know when you had the burr finish and then you go ahead and do the cartridge roll finish, you made the port itself slightly larger. Maybe that's what the engine wanted. And I don't disagree with it. I actually think that might have been a valid point. Because part of me is like, if I could have done one more dyno session, I would I would with the heads. The heads are now off and switching heads. But if I'd done another dyno session, I would have reburred it and dynoed it again. And I'd be curious to know if the line went up just a little bit more. And then if I redid it with the 60 or 40 grit again would it go up and keep going up and it would keep going back and forth until like they matched each other. Maybe, I don't know. However, I don't entirely follow that one on this combination because of this. Here's the perfect example. Now I haven't showed you this winter and I'm covering it up. So the winter, because of a later video. The black line you see is a manifold that's much smaller than this. I mean, significantly smaller than this. It was the best one of all the manifolds tested. So its cross-sectional area, its plenum volume, its everything is smaller and it did better. So that's this black line here. And then of course you got your 40 grit and burr just to kind of line them up. And there's the red bits of the 40 grit. So if look at actually this one, the port got a little bit bigger because of, you know, I did grind off the burr, but not by much, It'd be very, very small but it still was less than the power of a much smaller port. So I don't know if I have a conclusion for that. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, since you made it through this video, I want you to understand, please don't do this. I'm not attacking any one individual. And I know some of our fan bases like to attack each other. I, I'm not, I, it's irrelevant to me. This was just more for me to have a test to see. This, do not take this as gospel. This was, again, one combination. If you asked me, if you called me up and asked me now after this test, and YouTube had never taken place when I'd done this test, I would say, I don't think the finish makes that much of a difference. Even this was pretty small. I mean, yes, it was, it was larger, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I think it's a wash. Either one would make it better. Had I started with maybe with this one and then gone to bird, maybe the results would have flip-flopped. So I, I think if you're focusing on the finish more than you are the actual porting, I think that's where the loss is. And that's my opinion. So I'm not saying one's better than the other is what I'm trying to get at. And you're more than welcome to try whatever way you want. I will say this from a business standpoint, since I primarily port them, customers like seeing this finish way more than they like seeing a burr finish. Because any hillbilly, and don't take that wrong, hillbillies, can burr a, fin burr a manifold and make it burred up. And then when you do a burr manifold, even though it looks more uniform, people will see that and still think it's just some hack that did it. But for whatever reason, when you make it look better like this, even if it didn't really do anything, because I know some company is really good at making manifolds look beautiful. I actually wish I knew how they did that. People think their manifolds make more power because of the looks and it had nothing to do with it. Your eye doesn't dictate what the power the engine will make it just doesn't but from a customer standpoint they look at it and some are far more judgy so just saying 
So hopefully you got something out of this video. It went a little bit long, but there's your answers, at least for this combination. Guys, remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.